How's it going, everybody? Estas here. So the markets were all over the place. We had the S&P go down 0.1%. The Dow was down 0.3%. The NASDAQ 100 went up 0.1%. And the Russell went down 0.6%. So today, we're going to break down some charts, my thoughts on the market, stocks I'm looking at right now. So sit back, relax, take a sip of your coffee, go down below, get your 50 bucks from M1 Finance. Literally, all you have to do is use my link, deposit 100 dollars and we each get 50 bucks to invest with and you guys could check out my patreon if you want all my real-time buys sells call outs if you want a morning update video as well plus access to me throughout the day that is on patreon link down below and let's get right into the video so today like i said we were all over the place literally the dow was down s&p was down nasdaq went up and the russell went down and don't even get me started on these precious metals. I mean, gold got slammed, silver got hit even worse. The VIX was up 3.5%, which is an indication that there is A, volatility, and B, there is some fear, which we will get into in this video. But first, let's break down SPY, which tracks the S&P 500. Let's see on a technical basis what ended up happening today. And despite the fact that we went down, I would argue that today was a pretty bullish day when it comes to SPY because we held above 442, which was that resistance from the past couple of weeks. So we broke above that first and foremost on Friday and we pulled back this morning if you guys saw and last night the futures were down if you saw we got to about 441 and we rallied off of that point back above 442 pre-market and we coasted above it pretty much all day so even though we went down today overall we had a red day um, the fact that we held above the 50 moving average on the hourly chart and 442 I consider that, and 441 for that matter, I consider that a win for the Bulls. Well, the Bears, it's, it's, a, it's a loss for the Bears, but the Bulls, they won the day today. And we saw a lot of news come out. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Hold up. We'll talk about QQQ first. QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100, and you guys can clearly see this did go up today, but it closed under 369, which was a sticking point late July and last week. And we did close above the 50 moving average on the hourly chart, but I'd love to see a clear cut break above 369 for this ascending triangle to play out. So I'm going to put my alert right there. And look, look at my arrow right now. If I um, see this, and if we see this in general, us breaking out of the high from last week, that is obviously going to be very bullish, and that's going to be the ascending triangle playing out. So that is what I'm keeping an eye on in general when it comes to technicals for this upcoming week when it comes down to SPY and for QQQ and, and this week in general and for next week for that matter. Um, and we have a lot of news around the CV, right, the Delta variant. This is not fear-mongering. I'm not here like the news channels telling you all the world is over, we got to do this, that, the third. I'm not here saying that kind of stuff, guys, but I am going to keep it real. We saw oil prices, they got hit today. We had um, CL, let's pull that up, slash CL. It was down a good chunk, I mean 2%, and it's been down the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, ever since it hit 75 a barrel mid-July, now it's at 66 a barrel. So it's down about 12%, and that is because of fear of a potential lockdown. Um, what will happen if it locks down the economy again, or even if we get, you know, partial lockdowns across the U.S.? I don't know. What's going to happen? Well, demand for oil is going to go down, and even though production has been going up recently, um, the fact that demand would go down, that is going to hurt the price of oil. So we had oil stocks get hit today. Um, we had the uh, oil itself get hit today, like I just said. And we got some news, even though we can't fully trust them um, when it comes to these numbers, but we got some news out of China that their CV cases are increasing. And there's this fly right now flying in front of me or a mosquito. I don't know what the heck this is. I'm trying to bat it away from me right now. <laughs> but yeah, we got some news that 
the China cases are increasing, and who the heck knows what the actual numbers are? I mean, no one knows at the end of the day, but they're increasing over there. We had airlines and cruise lines drop today, which is another sign of, hey, maybe the demand's going to go down for these companies. You know, their stocks are reflecting that. The price of the stocks are reflecting the lack of demand that could be coming in the next coming months. Who knows? Even though I was just on a flight to Hawaii a couple weeks ago, it was jam-packed. Um, nobody knows what's going to happen in the fall, guys. And we all know stocks, they price in the future, right? They don't price in today, they price in the future. So that is why we're seeing the drop in oil, oil stocks, airlines, and cruise lines as of late. And we also have very important data coming out this week. We have the CPI number, which is coming out on Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. And you guys know inflation has been all over the place. So that is going to be interesting. And I believe last month, inflation was 5% annualized um, year over year, which is unbelievable. It might have been even more than 5%. And then on Thursday, we have PPI data coming out, um, which is also a big number. So guys, listen, things could get ugly. That is just the truth based on what we're seeing right now, based on the upcoming data, things could get ugly. And I'm not trying to freak you guys out. I'm not fear mongering. I'm not telling you not to invest. In fact, I can't tell you that. I'm not a financial advisor and I'm only here to give you guys my perspective and tell you all what I'm doing and I'm still investing. It's not like I'm 90% cash. I'm one of those guys that's, you know, preaching, oh, the market's going to crash, get ready, dig a bunker up, hide in the bunker. That's not me, guys. That's not me. I'm still investing, but I'm just trying to bring these... Uh, concerns to to light and um, just give my thoughts on them. So at this point, the markets are a bit rocky, a bit shaky. The VIX was up and I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys are enjoying the video thus far, you know what to do. Hit the like button, make sure to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And let's talk about some stocks, starting off with stock number one, Coinbase, ticker symbol C-O-I-N. This one up over 8%, pretty much 9% on the day-to-day, up $22 per share, and it's finally getting up to my average cost, which I've told you guys before was right around 280 on Coinbase. And full disclosure, I'm still holding on to my Coinbase right now. I bought these shares um, a little bit after the IPO, um, about a couple of weeks after the IPO. If you guys look here, it hit 430. It went down a bit. Um, I think I was buying shares in the 300s, average down a bit overall. Again, my average is at about 280, and I held the bag a bit, and uh, I was down a good chunk. I was down at one point 20%, a little bit more than that. Uh, but now we're finally seeing the resurgence in Coinbase and crypto. Last time I checked, Bitcoin was at 45K. Um, Dogecoin was at almost 30 cents again, which, by the way, I own Dogecoin too as a freaking fun position. I mean, I literally have $100 in Dogecoin. Nothing. Um, I bought that at like 50 cents, so I'm down in the hole on Dogecoin, which it's funny watching this stuff, guys. You know, Dogecoin's kind of a joke, as you all know. Um, but yeah, we're seeing a resurgence in the crypto space, and that is pushing up Coinbase, a lot of these other crypto mining stocks like Riot and Mara. And I mentioned to you guys, if 265 or 260 in general on Coinbase were to break, which it did today, there was a big gap to fill up to about 300, 305. Um, and that was the resistance from back in the middle of May. So now that we're breaking out with Coinbase, or not Coinbase, um, the crypto on fire, Coinbase could keep on trucking along, guys, even though it is a bit overbought on the four-hour chart here. Maybe it does consolidate a bit. I don't know about 270, 275, but ultimately, I see this uh, momentum to the upside continuing, and that is why I am remaining long on the stock right now. And we also had AMC report today, which admittedly, I did not look at their earnings, so we'll see right now what they reported and what the stock is doing. Oh, there you go, guys. 
AMC is moving up like crazy. We close at 3380 and look at that squeeze after hours. Holy crap. Um, it's up to 37 bucks now, so it's up 8%, um, which, to be honest, when it comes to AMC, an 8% move is like another day in the park, right? Another walk in the park. Um, so it's not that crazy, but still. 8% after hours is great. So let's see what they reported. Um, they did EPS adjusted negative 71 cents versus negative 93. So they beat EPS. Revenue came in at 444.7 million versus 375.28 million. Um, so they beat EPS, beat revenue. AMC Entertainment says currently it has liquidity avail uh, liquidity availability of more than two billion dollars. Okay. That's pretty solid. I wonder how much they're burning per quarter, though. We saw 71 cents. How much does that equate over to um, the, the actual dollar value? I'm not seeing that in here. I'll probably do some math after this video to figure that out. But, hey, they have $2 billion right now in liquidity. That's not too shabby. And the, okay, here it says Q2 earnings takeaways, transform, uh, transformational quarter, but not quote unquote out of the woods. Have they been watching my videos? I use that term, but I'm not the one that coined that term. Um, so, I mean, um, I guess others have used that before. But anyway. That is a pretty good earnings report nonetheless for AMC. It is breaking out on the four-hour chart. We're noticing it's trying to take out the wedge here. Not quite yet there, but it is trading above the 50 moving average, which is a good sign, I'd say, um, right about... Uh, well, let's go back to that four hours trading right at 37. So I'd like to see it break 40, which is why I have my alert at $40 and start moving up towards that 50 uh, or rather the 180 moving average, which is right around $45. So we're going to be watching the continuation here on AMC and another one I'm looking at, which is um, an alcohol, uh, alcoholic, um, uh, not an alcoholic, uh, an alcohol company. It's called Sam, S-A-M. They own a lot of different, um, well, it's called Boston Beer Company. The ticker is Sam, Samuel Adams. They own a lot of different alcohol brands. Um, Truly is one of them. Twisted Tea, um, obviously Sam Adams. And this stock has just been creamed. I mean, I don't even know how else to put it. This has just been abysmal. The stock has gone from 1350 to 650. It's down half. And whenever a stock is down half, there's got to be a reason. Either there's horrible management making bad decisions, they've they missed earnings, insiders are selling out. There's got to be something going on. And I'm going to look deeper into it to figure that out. And I'll probably make a video on it or maybe talk about it in another video. Uh, but this is opening up a decent opportunity, in my opinion, whether it's a swing trade, a long term play. I'm very interested. Maybe the four hour chart is not the best looking. Quite honestly, it's, it, it isn't the best looking. We're still downtrending. We're seeing a, a bearish cross, a death cross, whatever you want to call it. But if we pull back a bit, we go to that yearly chart. Notice how, or not even the yearly chart, the three year chart. Notice how we're approaching the 180 SMA on this chart. Um, I can see this maybe bouncing, whether it's from 550, um, I don't know about 500, I don't know if it gets that low, but 550 to 600, this looks, generally speaking, to be the buy range for this stock on a three-year basis, considering back in early 2020, this was, um, wow, holy crap, guys, wait a second, this was $300 back in March, and it erupted all the way to $1,300. That's a sign that people, they were having a little bit too much fun over quarantine, huh? They must have been getting drunk every night. And I don't really drink much, to be quite honest, maybe once a month, if that. And I've tried some of their products, and I, and I like them, I'll be honest. I've tried Twisted Tea. I like Truly's. Sam Adams is all right. I'm not, I'm not a big beer guy. But their product is good, so I guess their earnings were through the roof due to their products being a little bit too good, and people liked those products, and they were locked down, and they didn't know what to do. Um, so, yeah, this dip is interesting. Maybe it got a bit ahead of itself from 300 to 1300 in about a year. That is unbelievable. Now it's down to 680 So we'll see, guys. We'll see. If people start buying this dip, 
I might be one of them. You know, I might be one of them. If we start moving back over um, 700, momentum starts to build. I'm going to be looking at it. Beyond Meat is another one, BYND, that I'm personally looking at right now. I'm seeing an inverse head and shoulder on this four-hour chart, left shoulder here ahead. We got the right shoulder right here. We had a move of over 5% today. And I've mentioned this before, and it's crazy because I've always grown up eating meat. I come from a Greek family. I mean, gosh, if you guys, anyone out there is Greek or, or Italian for that matter, the culture is very similar. Your grandmothers shove food in your throat. They make you eat. Your, your parents, too, for that matter. I mean, I grew up eating so much cheese so much meat, and uh, it's crazy because I, I like Beyond Burgers sometimes more than regular burgers. It's hard to explain. You guys have to try the product. It is a very good product, and that's a little bit off. It's really not off topic because we are talking about Beyond Meat. Uh, but if you're looking at a long-term investment, I'm a firm believer that you have to like the product too. And, and, and another thing worth mentioning is don't just buy a stock because you like the product. And, you know, don't just go to um, Gap Outlet or whatever or go to some freaking store that has a stock and just buy it because you like the clothes or the product. You have to look at the fundamentals, the numbers, the prospects, the growth, all that good stuff. And then if you like the product, that's a plus too. Then you could buy the stock uh, if that makes any sense, right? But for me, I like Beyond Meat. The product's great. And now the technicals are starting to align and the fundamentals are solid as well, even though I haven't bought the stock for long term quite yet, which I might do in the near term. I've been saying that for a while, but I already have an investment in this space with Tattooed Chef. But enough with that. Let's look at the chart, guys. Inverse head and shoulder, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We're seeing it very clearly. We broke above the 50 moving average today. Now it looks like this stock wants to go 135, which is right by the 180 moving average. And I think it's going to break that. I mean, this has been beaten down over the past month and a half. And I think it's time for it to go on a rally. And today could very well be the start of that rally. So I'm going to show you all, based on that oval I just drew, I think this could go to 160 in due time, and that could give it anywhere from, let's say, 10, 15, 20% even upside from where we are right now. So watch out for Beyond Meat. Moderna, just when you thought it was going to slow down, well, it had a rip your face rally today, up 17%, up $70 per share. And what do you expect when CV cases are rising, more people are taking the shot? You know, they just reported earnings that destroyed the numbers. I mean, look, they just did $6.46 EPS. The last quarter they did $2.84. The quarter before that, they lost about 70 cents. So this company has been raking in the dough and it's just been going off. I don't know what else to say. Would I be chasing in here? No. If I was already in it, what would I be doing? If you guys have been watching me for a while, you probably know what I'd be doing. I would be locking in profits, no doubt about it. Maybe not, honestly, I was going to say maybe not all the profits, but with today's move, I would be locking in all the profits. I mean, I'll be honest with you. This is very extended. It's literally like a rocket ship. So I would cool, I would wait for it to cool off a bit, wait for it to fall. Um, that's not financial advice. Please don't, please don't. Don't sue me, bro, like me, Kevin says. And please do your own research, as always. And, I mean, look, this is too overbought. I would not be chasing it here. Maybe if it were to pull down to the 50 SMA, which it has done multiple times in the past three weeks, maybe then we could buy the dip. Uh, but even then, I'd be a bit nervous because the second these Delta cases drop, Second, we see the fear die down, which could happen. This is going to tank, in my opinion. It could go down back to the 300. So keep that in mind. Chegg is another one that I'm personally looking at right now, maybe as a short opportunity. Um, they just did EPS of 20 cents and revenue of $198.5 million, and the stock is down. Or actually, no, it's up a little bit. It's fighting to hold the 180 SMA on this four-hour chart. Um, we're also noticing a double buy here, So maybe it does double bottom break out, which is really the uh, the bull's only chance here because the second it breaks this double bottom, 80 bucks breaks, let's say, 
This is going to go down, in my opinion, probably to the mid-low 70s, maybe high 60s, which, which again, is why I said it could be a short opportunity. So we're going to be watching that, and on top of that, Chegg's been trading in this downwards channel for months. So I'm going to put my alert um, at about $79. Mark is at or below, so it alerts me when it goes below, if it goes below $79. So watch out for Chegg. And the last one for today is AMD. This went down another 2.3% today, down $2.5. It closed at 107.58 and is down 10 cents after hours right now. And it's right around the 50 SMA on the four hour chart, which now that it's oversold a bit, I feel like we could get a relief rally here, which I wouldn't be surprised if we did. Uh, maybe back up to 110, 112. And if you guys are in my Patreon, which again is linked down below, I highly recommend you check that out. I'm very active on there. I sold out of my AMD last week at 118. We pretty much nailed the top on this, and now it's at 107. So let's say I held on. I would be down 9% from where I sold out. I was still up on the position. I'd still be up on the position because I was in at $77 roughly, actually $76.60 to be exact. Um, so I'd still be up, but I would have lost 9% of my profit. So now that I'm out of AMD, I've mentioned this on Patreon. I'll say it here. I'm looking to re-enter this position, whether it's um, at 100, 95, 90, I'm looking to maybe get back in, uh, but not here, quite honestly, not at 107. I don't want to rush diving back in on the first dip that we see. I'm going to give it a couple of weeks, and if it somehow finds its way back to the double digits, 90, 95, maybe then I'll start scaling in. So, Overall, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, and make sure to turn on that notification bell and check out my Patreon. If you guys want all my buys, sells, call-outs, real-time, and a morning update video and more access to me throughout the day, that's on Patreon. Link down below. Or you guys can go to StossurfFest.com slash Patreon. That's StossurfFest.com slash Patreon. And make sure to also check out the M1 Finance link down below if you want 50 bucks. All you have to do is use that link, deposit $100, and we each get 50 bucks to invest with. And that's it. Make sure to also check out my videos from earlier today. This is the third video of the day. I don't know what got into me today, guys. I just wanted to film and film and film. And I guarantee you, you'll find value in those two videos. We talked about three other stocks we didn't talk about today in this video. And we go over GNOG, Golden Nugget Online Gaming, being bought out by DraftKings, which I sold out of, by the way, GNOG. I, I made about 50% on that move. So go check out that video. I'll pop it up here. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching again, as always. Peace out.